Hello all, Jack Hollywood here coming coming at you with a post commentary edition of Jack Plays. This time with with a quite obscure arcade game which is very weird. It's called Snow Brothers 2 with New Elves. Like I'm not even too sure like most people nowadays know that this game is around. It's your fairly standard like bubble bobble clone, but just with you know weather people and all that. That face the princess makes though, just just gets me every time. <laughs> so as you can see from this little demonstration, like the gameplay itself is like fairly standard. You just turn enemies into snowballs and you just wipe everyone out and off to the next floor you go. And also for, for, for the character select screen, you get to look at these beautiful faces. If you were lucky, lucky, lucky enough to have like a Japanese ROM of this game, then then these hor horrific portraits would be re replaced with these like cute little anime characters. There aren't really that many differences be between you know, this version and the Japanese one anyway, like, the text is the same. But anyway, as I said, it's it's your fairly standard Bubble Bobble clone, just, just with snowmen and, you know, other mythical creatures like that, really nothing special. Chests, those chests you see, like, they're pretty good for points, as far as I'm concerned. And those apples, if you if you can get five of them to spell out extra, as the name implies, you'll pretty much get an extra life. And as, you, and as you've seen on, like, the earlier fours, if, if you manage to wipe out every enemy but by just kicking one snowball you get you'll get a great or even nice bonus but yeah coming up we get our first we get our first extra life by by spelling out extra how funny that dancing beans of all things give you an extra life this is our first boss. It's basically like this sentient jackpot machine. I, I don't know. This this game is so weird. Basically, he just spits out like random goons from its roof, and he also jump. He also like likes to jump over to you, but he's pathetically easy, honestly. Much like every other boss in this game, like apart from the chameleons, which we'll get to um, in like World Four. But anyway, our whole mission revolves around rescuing this princess who keeps getting kidnapped by like several other villains along the way. There are roughly like six worlds in this game, but. But I actually find this this game shorter than its predecessor, believe it or not. Two of these worlds you have you just have to scale to, to the top of them in order in order in order to finish them. And including the bosses. Like most of like most of the worlds consist of six six levels each. So since there's since there's that and two other worlds where you just have to get to the top, the game's roughly about 26 levels long, as opposed to the original's 50 levels. Like it's way shorter, but but it, but it is much better in terms of like gameplay and design because the one thing you can jump down platforms by holding down and then, and then press jump. Something I can't I can't go back to the original without. 
this robot will go away if you take out all the other enemies first, by the way. You can kill him for like, for like, like a bunch of points. <laughs> yeah, there's the, got the good bonus there. Like, it's strange how I didn't, <laughs> didn't care about how weird this game actually was when I, when I was a kid. That's, that's probably my first death in the whole whole thing, that I was thrown into a situation where both those guys were spinning and there wasn't really much I could do to get out of that. Anyway, what's our second boss? This random train thing. <laughs> I don't know, like, when I was a kid I think I just lived for how weird this game actually was. Like, I didn't question it, but still. But yeah, his, his main thing is mainly firing out parachuting goon, goons and firing off, like, missiles, like, with his nose or something. Like, I really don't know. And yeah, he'll also come from like the left side. I'm not sure if his nose still kills you even after you've landed the final hit on him. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, coming up to World 3 and this is basically one of the few race to the top worlds that I was talking about. <clears throat> it's basically as the objective applies. That guy will take your princess away and you pretty much have have to race him, race, race him up to the top of level. <clears throat> There is a time limit, but as far as I'm concerned, it's very lenient. I'm pretty sure you can run it, run it out, but I've never got that to happen. Yeah, that will happen if you haven't got got the screen to scroll in quite a while. <laughs> like, he, like that random voice will just remind you, "Hey, this is a race to the top, you idiot! Don't waste time." Some points you you will need to create turn enemies into snowballs just to jump on them, and you you don't actually fight this rocket, by the way. It's probably the only world in this game that doesn't doesn't actually have a boss. You just, yeah, you just watch it take off and then Nick just kicks a bum at it. This is one unlucky princess. This is normally around the point where I, I sort of run out of s stuff to say, uh, where I would have run out of stuff to say about the game because, well, it it's just a short basic arcade game really, like, there's not really that much <laughs> I can say about it other than how weird it, it, it is and, you know, how the bosses work. Oh, when you die you pretty much lose all your power-ups. Um, I got a trophy. We can't see what it does right now since there's no enemies on the screen, but since there is now, you turn really big and you can pretty much kill anything in one hit. I'm 
I'm not too sure how long it usually lasts. And, and that was, like, that must have, it must have been my lucky day when I was recording this because I got another trophy right after I, like, right after I lost my giant form. Anyway, the Chameleon Twins are coming up. <coughs> as far as I know, this is the only boss that, that, that I'm consistently terrible at. <laughs> Basically, you just have to turn their, ba their babies into snowballs and kick them when, when one of these guys are on the ground. And obviously, you can't hit them on the roof. Just don't try to go for the, like, the rapid fire strategy. <laughs> because there are times where, where you will start to turn, turn their babies into snowballs, but again, if you're rapid firing, he'll just fall off to the platform and fall off the platform and I should have died earlier there. He'll just end up falling to, they'll just end up falling to like the previous plat platform and you'll, you'll have to go down. Yeah, I don't think any of the bosses attack really kill you after you've landed the, f the final hit on them. But anyway, this chameleon god just, just takes our princess away again I guess. And send, and send us to, the, to like this talent show involving a bunny, like, I don't know, this this game is just so weird. <laughs> this is the second to last world in the game and... <laughs> you gotta love that dumb death right there. I could have got another extra life in there if, if I just waited for the R to come instead of just going for the A again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there is like a pump, a pumpkin guy that that can come out if you take too long. Again, kind of like, kind of like. Bubble Bobble, where if you where if you take too long, this guy will just track track you until you die. Well, chase you down anyway. But I've never had that happen to me. I had a pretty hard time with this fly for no particular reason. Like maybe because I'm overly cautious about about that flame over there. I'm pretty sure you can't jump over. I'm pretty sure you can't jump over it without making a snowball first beforehand. And that was a bit bit of a close call right there. And yes, you are hear hearing Nick say, "Let's go!" every every time he enters a new floor. I'd say Nintendo's gonna have a lawsuit with these guys after, after they're done saving the princess. Anyway, our fourth boss, not counting the rocket anyway since you don't actually fight it, is this performing bunny that likes to, you know, moon the player every so often. Like, she is pathetically easy, she is quite easy like most of the bosses, but, but, but good god does she have a lot of health. 
I don't know if she has less in the Japanese version, but it's just ridiculous how much health she has. Yeah, this fiendish spike spike wall will will pop in to 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 kill you every so often, but but her pattern pretty much stays the, stays the same. Yeah, the spike wall can e can can even send snowballs flying for you. And yeah, as she loses more health, that spike will will gradually start to coming closer on you. So she's green right now, so chances are that that's going to have, happen right this second. Yep. But yeah, it's just a, a relatively easy boss that takes too long to die. So we're coming up to like the last world in, in this game and it's another like race to the top thing. I'm not going to bother digesting how suggestive that looked. All I know is that it did look suggestive and I'm just going to leave it at that. But yeah, last wall's in the game, here we go. And again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's another race to the top. This one definitely re relies more on, you know, turn, 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 turning the enemies into snowballs just so you can jump off of them. At least a lot more than the previous one. And again, the time for this one is is still very lenient. Like, I'm not even sure if you can actually run it out on purpose. But yeah, you can take a few, a few shortcuts just just by jumping on the snowballs you make. This is probably the stu the stupidest stupidest mistake I make in in the whole in like the whole the whole run. I have no idea what to do like like with the snowball once once I make it, even though it says how right what you're supposed to do. But anyway, we're up to the up to the last boss, who, like the others, is pathetically easy. This wooden clock thing. All he does is just spit out spit out goons <laughs> at like an an obvious an, an obvious rate. <laughs> you can pretty much beat him on one life. Like, especially when you consider that, that that the chameleons are the only boss that that I have trouble with. At around half health, he'll he'll start doing like yeah this this particular motion faster than he normally would, and he'll spit out a fireball instead. Again, it's relatively obvious.
That princess must be getting some ser serious burns right now. And anyway, you go you go through all that trouble just to find out that she's she's like a whole meter taller than your character. I don't know what she's been eating. Can I just point out that in this ending, Nick has a nose, even though we didn't even see it in the in the cutscenes. And what are we even doing that makes us so happy? But anyway, that was Snow Brothers 2 with new elves. I told you it'd be a short and sweet arcade game. And yeah, the rocket appears in, in like these... Well, I want to call them end credits, but you don't actually see who made the game, so... Yeah, funny how they put that rocket in the ending, at, like, as a boss, even though you don't actually fight it. And obviously they've got to put this guy, because obviously he's not done yet, even though he just fell in a pit, pit of fire. And I guess you could say the cycle repeats again. See ya.